um, devotees. Uh, we are very fortunate. We will go ahead and proceed to our next session and hear about uh, uh, hear about uh, the appearance day of uh, our most beloved Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it's from none other than His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj. Maharaj, I would like to welcome you on the Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. And a very, very happy Gaur Purnima to you too. Whenever you're ready, Hare Maharaj, Krishna. please take the call. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to you and to all the devotees. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. So, uh, bring up a verse from the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita from the fourth chapter of Adi Lila, verse number 39. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Rinda Duhetu Avatari Lana Bhakta Gan Apane Aswade Premanam Sankirtan Translation Thus, with two intention, the Lord, intentions, the Lord appeared with his devotees and tasted the nectar of prema with the congregational chanting of the holy name. Next verse. Sedwara achadale kirtana sanchare nama prema malagati. Parala, parala samsare. Thus, Lord Chaitanya spread kirtan even among the untouchables. He wove a wreath of the holy name and, and prema in which he garlanded the entire world. Next verse. E matta bhakta bhava kari angikara. Apane achari bhakti karila prachar. In this way, assuming the sentiment of a devotee, he preached devotional service while practicing it himself. Srila Prabhupada's purport, and we'll read most of the purport. When Srila Rupa Goswami met Lord Chaitanya at Prayag, he offered his respectful obeisance. By submitting that Lord Chaitanya was more magnanimous than any other avatar of Krishna because he was distributing the love of Krishna. His mission was to enhance love of Godhead in the human form of life. The highest achievement is to attain the platform of love of Godhead. Lord Chaitanya did not invent a system of religion as people sometimes assume. Religious systems are meant to show the existence of God who is then generally approached as the cosmic order supplier. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's transcendental mission is to distribute love of Godhead to everyone. Anyone who accepts God as the Supreme can take to the process of chanting Hare Krishna and become a lover of God. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya is the most magnanimous. This munificent broadcasting of devotional service is possible only for Krishna himself. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya is Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has taught the philosophy of surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who has surrendered to the Supreme can make further progress by learning to love him. Therefore, the Krishna conscious movement propagated by Lord Chaitanya is especially meant for those who are cognizant of the presence of the Supreme Godhead, the ultimate controller of everything. His mission is to teach people how to dovetail themselves into engagements of transcendental loving service. 
He is Krishna. He is Krishna teaching his own service from the position of a devotee. The Lord's acceptance of the role of a devotee is the eternal form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <clears throat> and is another of the Lord's wonderful features. A conditioned soul cannot reach the absolute personality of Godhead by his imperfect endeavor. Therefore, it is wonderful that Lord Chaitanya in the form of Lord Garanga has made it easy for everyone to approach him. Continue, there's more. <laughs> Srup Damodar Goswami has described Lord Chaitanya as Krishna himself with the attitude of Radharani or a combination of Radha and Krishna. The intention of Lord Chaitanya is to taste Krishna's sweetness and the transcendental love. He did not care to think of himself as Krishna because he wanted the position of Radharani. We should remember this. I'll stop here. Om Magyan Timidandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudeva Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Sitarine Anchakopa, the Rubis Cha, Kripa, Sindhu, the Eva Cha, the Titanam, Pavane, Pio, Vaishnava, Pio, Namaho, Maha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Siva, Siddhi Gaur, Bhakta Vinda, Ajanu, Lampita, Bujo, Kandakam, Badadam, Sankirtanai, Kapita, Loka, Malaya, Takso. Vishwambaro, Dvijabaro, Yuga Dharma follow, one day Jagatriyakaro, Karuna Avataro, one day Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando, Sano Dido Guru Daya Pushpanvanto, Chitta Sando Tamo Nudo, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So Lord Chaitanya, his appearance is today. This heralds in the new year for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We celebrate the new year on the day of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohi Onya. He is Krishna himself. He is non-different than the original Krishna of Vrindavan, but he has a sentiment that is different, and he has adopted the sentiment of his pure devotee, or you might say his internal energy, who is the highest platform of devotional expression, Srimati Nandharani. So in that mood of her, her love for him, he performs his pastimes. And it's explained that Lord Chaitanya is Chana Avatar. This is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Chana means hidden. He comes as a devotee of himself and he doesn't play the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We, we worship him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we don't work, we also honor his internal mood as being the devotee of the Lord. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's mentioned that uh, he appeared for six reasons. And those six reasons are divided into two categories internal and external. The external reasons are that during the time prior to Lord Chaitanya's appearance in the world, in the area of Navadvi, where the Lord appeared, um, people were quite uh, elevated. They were highly intellectual, very 
pious, but not very devotional. Um, they performed a lot of ritualistic ceremonies. They worshiped the internal energy of the Lord rather than worshiping the, they worshiped the external energy of the Lord, I should say, rather than worshiping the Lord. They were interested in increasing material facilities, the happiness that comes with material gain, and performing great elaborate sacrifices. But hardly in that area, although uh, it was a bastion of intellectualism, everyone was more or less focused on higher forms of material enjoyment. And this is explained in the in the, both in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in the Bhagavad Gita, that people aspire for higher material realms. And so sacrifices, performances, worship of the demigods, and various types of shakta worship were going on at the time. Therefore, at that time, of course, when the Lord appears, he sends before he appears, he has sent some of his confidential associates. And one of that confidential associates was an expansion of himself, who was known as Sri Advaita Acharya. Sri Advaita Acharya is Mahavishnu himself, coming as a devotee of the Lord. And he was a Brahmin, highly elevated, and worshipped and respected as the best of all Brahmanas. He was quite disturbed to see the consciousness of the people at the time. They were not inclined to devotional service. They were inclined to higher materialistic sacrifices and principles for gain in material life. And so he became quite concerned. In fact, his concern took the form of anger and he wanted to do something to punish them, but he realized that it wasn't his position to do that. Only the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his original form as Krishna himself can rectify or purify the situation. And so uh, with great anguish and with great enthusiasm and devotion, he went to the banks of the Ganga, and he set up an altar with tulsi leaves, sandalwood paste, and shalagram shila. And he was worshiping the shalagram shila, calling with great, uh, with great heartfelt desire, please appear, my dear Lord. So one of the reasons why the Lord appeared was to satisfy the desire of uh, Advaita Charya. The second reason was the Lord also mentions in the Bhagavad Gita himself, Yadayadahi Dharmasya Glanir Bhagavati Bharata, Abhutanam Adharmasya Tadatranam Srijamiyaham Pavitranayam Sadunam Vinasanaya Chaduskritam Dharma samstar panartaya sambhagami yuge yuge. The Lord appears when there is a decline in religious principles and an increase of irreligion throughout the world. And the third reason, which was the ex and the third and the most important of the external reasons, was to propagate the Yuga Dharma at the time, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna the Maha Mantra. So these were the three external reasons why the Lord appeared. The internal reasons are his confidential reasons, and those are very uh, difficult to understand, but it is actually understood in relationship to the Lord's personal desire. And those reasons are, they are confidential reasons. And the first one is to relish the position of Srimati Radharani. She is the prime reciprocation of transcendental love for Krishna. Subjects become or take the position of the object. In other words, 
he is the subject, but now he becomes the object. He takes her position, why? To understand her love for him. And Radha and Krishna cannot be separated. Lord Chaitanya is a, what we call a combination of Radha and Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nodhiyana. He is the, he has the heart of Radharani. He is called Goranga, and she is all called, she calls, she's called Gorangi. Refers to their color. Lord Chaitanya is a golden color, and Radharani is also the same color. It's explained that when the Lord, before he manifested his pastime on earth, he was with his internal concert, Srimati Radharani. He was describing how he was going to appear in this age, taking on her mood of devotion. She became quite concerned that taking on her mood of devotion, he would become mad and he would not be able to keep his, his life. In other words, he would go mad in ecstasy. So she said, I will give you my color to protect you. And so therefore he is also known as Goranga. Her love for her, him is tasted more, 10 million times more than his love for her that is mentioned. Her love is all pervading, yet it still expands. How can we understand that? But something is all pervading, but yet it can still expand. And although her love is so great, it has not a single iota of any personal pride in it. Therefore, it is completely pure. So this is one of the three confidential reasons why the Lord appears as Radharani. The second one is to understand what is about him that is so wonderful that attracts her to him. What is about Krishna that is so attractive that Radharani becomes fully absorbed in loving him in so many different ways. Well, she, he wants to understand his own sweetness. There's a beautiful story that's mentioned in the uh, Chaitanya Mangala. Well, Ochan Dastakor describes in his narration that uh, Krishna was in Dwarka with his internal energy, Rukmini. He is, he's Dwarka dish. He's the king of Dwarka. And he has 16,108 queens. And the principal queen is Rukmini. So Rukmini is there and she's massaging the Lord's feet. And she's massaging and massaging and she's becoming so overwhelmed with love that she cannot restrain her emotions. And she expresses her emotion. And then that expression comes in the form of saying, my dear Lord, your lotus feet are so wonderful, so wonderful, so wonderful. She can't control her emotions. And in the continuation of her expression of her love, she said, no one, no one in existence can understand how wonderful your lotus feet are. And then she said, except one, Srimati Radharani. So when the Lord heard that, he was thinking, oh, Radharani understands me more than I can even understand myself. So with that mentality, Radha's mentality, he adopts Radha's mentality in order to understand what is the power or the sweetness that he has to attract her love to him. There's a nice, wonderful pastime, how Krishna is even attracted to himself. <laughs> um, he's walking, this was also in Dwarka, and he passes by a big column. The column 
is somewhat mirror-like. It reflects the image in front of it. And so Krishna passes by, and then he walks back to look, and he says, oh, who's that? That person is so attractive. And then he said, oh, that's me. <laughs> so Krishna even gets bewildered by his own attraction. <laughs> So Radharani, of course, you see, is the personification of understanding fully how wonderful Krishna is. The gopis themselves, they cannot understand Radharani's love for Krishna. And therefore, they want to understand it more and more by not losing even a fraction of a second of the darshan of Krishna's appearance. So... At one point in their ecstasy, they curse Lord Brahma. They say, Lord Brahma, you are an imperfect creator. You have created eyes with eyelids. And therefore, we cannot continuously see the beauty of the Lord. Eyelids blink. <laughs> so this is the love for the devotees, for the Lord Chaitanya from the gopis. So that's the second reason. And the third reason is to enjoy the happiness that Radharani tastes and to understand that happiness from his position, from her position, he takes her position. What is her happiness? Mm -hmm. um, it's the selfless love of Srimati Radharani, which is the pinnacle of ultimate happiness. And the gopis headed by Srimati Radharani, cannot or will not try to enjoy themselves. They want to give happiness to Krishna. And therefore, although they experience so much happiness in relationship to Krishna, they have no desire for their own happiness. And this is an important point that people may not fully understand that the difference between love and lust Love and lust looks the same many times. But what is lust? Lust means that you come in contact with another person to fulfill your own desire. Maybe it's a desire to become happy, but that's still under the category of lust. Love means only to act for the benefit of the beloved with not a selfish, not even a single iota of selfishness for oneself. One is, does not care anything about what happens to themselves. All they want to do is show their love for another by making that other person happy. That is the actual understanding of love. So with Radharani's sentiment, the Lord came and he preached the Yuga Dharma, which was the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the expression of Radharani's love for Krishna in the highest ecstasy. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that, that he actually chants and dances and spreads this amongst the untouchables of the world. It says in the uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared for propagating the religion of the age, which was the chanting of the holy name. But this, this was secondary. His internal reasons were primary. And to spread amongst the untouchables, untouchables, that's us. <laughs> that's us here in the material world. Distribution of the holy name and prema and, and to garland the entire world with Radharani's love. So those who engage in Sankirtan movement and make the chanting of the holy names their prime activity in life will begin to understand a little bit about Lord Chaitanya and why he came to distribute love of God. His mood is very sweet. His mood is very magnanimous. Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Goda Shruste Namaha. He is the most magnanimous person. He wants to give love of God to each and every living entity. 
and he does it through demonstrating himself by propagating the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. He taught us how to love Krishna. When Krishna was here, <clears throat> Krishna wasn't so easily approachable. Therefore, when he spoke to Bhagavad Gita, he summed up his teachings by saying, Sarva Dharma Pradikshajam Mamekam Sadhanam Vraja Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Vyam Moksa Yashyami Ma Suchaha that Krishna was saying, you must surrender to me. And when you do, then you will experience the love of God in devotion. But he made conditions for surrender. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Namo Maha Vandanaya. Most magnanimous, he makes no conditions. Therefore, he taught how to love God by chanting, and dancing and taking wonderful sacred foodstuffs offered to the Lord known as Krishna Prashadam. If you want something simple, if you want something easy, but if you want something very profound at the same time, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. It is so profound and no one can understand Lord Chaitanya. It's not possible. But at the same time, he becomes so easily available in the movement that he gave by giving us the opportunity to develop our internal mood of love for Krishna through the process of the Sankirtan movement. And the Sankirtan movement is Lord Chaitanya's expression of love of God. And it is also his expression of Radharani's internal mood for Krishna. <clears throat> when you see Krishna dancing in rasa dance, as Krishna did in Vrindavan with the gopis, which is considered to be the pinnacle or the supreme expression of loving relationship between Krishna and his internal associates, the residents of Vrindavan. And you see Lord Chaitanya dancing and chanting with his devotees in Kirtan, there is no difference. There is no difference between these two. Mm -hmm. uh, Krishna Varna, Tusa Krishna, Sangupanga, Saparshadam, Yagyai, Sankirtanai, Prayai, Yajanti, He, Sumei, Saha. This is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has made it so easy and so not. And what he did to herald his appearance, Lord Chaitanya appeared during an interesting time, he created something inauspicious in order to bring in something auspicious. We see, and this is true, and we're seeing it even now today, that when people's uh, happiness is interfered with by external circumstances, such as what we have now, a, a disease traveling around, of course, it's practically gone, but for two years we were seeing that, how people were quite fearful and also very much uh, forced to change their life, all because of external situations. So what do people do? Well, the materialists, they go deeper into sense gratification, but the devotees and pious people, they go, they go closer to God. So Lord Chaitanya, he is very intelligent. So he created a lunar eclipse, which is considered to be very auspicious. Inauspicious, I'm sorry, very inauspicious. And during the time of his desired appearance, this lunar eclipse happened. Now, during that time in the Navadvip area, people would go to the banks of the Holy River Ganga, and when something inauspicious, they would bathe in the Ganga to counteract and to be protected from the inauspiciousness. So, and they would also pray to the Lord during that time. So people were not chanting Hare Krishna, they were not worshiping the Lord, but the Lord arranged for his appearance to be in such a way that everyone would welcome him 
in the form of the Yuga Dharma, which was chanting the holy name through a lunar eclipse. And so it says the Lord appeared during that time and thousands and thousands of people were going to the Ganga, bathing in the Ganga and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. At that time, the Lord appeared in the house of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. Um, and he appeared in a most wonderful, beautiful form. He was in his baby-like form. He was so attractive that people from everywhere hearing about the birth in the house of Sachi Mata came to see the wonderful child. They brought gifts. They brought all kinds of auspicious articles. They brought their good fortune. They brought everything just to know the child. So the Lord appeared in a very profound way in order to herald in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And of course, as we hear from his later pastimes, to taste more directly Radharani's love for him in his expression of the Sankirtan movement. So these are some of the uh, reasons why, these are actually the reasons, the six reasons, three internal and three external, why the Lord appeared. And he performed many, many wonderful pastimes. Um, many of the pastimes are noted by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, along with Vrindavan Das Thakur in their works, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavat along with uh, Lochan Das and Chaitanya Mangala. All of these writings have deep and very uh, extensive explanations of the reasons of the Lord's appearance. So the Lord doesn't appear in Kali Yuga each time Kali Yuga appears. He appears once in every 1,000 Kali Yugas. So uh, we might consider ourselves very fortunate because one cannot approach Vrindavan Dham without the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's not possible. So in Kali Yuga, Vrindavan Dham is not available, but once in every thousand Kali Yugas, when Krishna appears at the end of Dwarpa Yuga, and his disappearance at that time heralds in the beginning, not heralds, but marks the beginning of, uh, of uh, Kali Yuga. Only 500 years after that, the Supreme Personality of Godhead again appears, this time in his most magnanimous uh, form as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, Chaitanya means living force. The living force that, that inspires the, the, the devotees in their love for Krishna. He is the internal energy of the Lord who appears in the hearts of the Lord, but also personally as a devotee of the Lord to teach. And there are many, many wonderful pastimes. Tomorrow we will, I know in America, you are all celebrating Lord Chaitanya's appearance today, so you're all very fortunate. Here I am in India, so we will be, tomorrow, we will be celebrating the same occasion here in the land of India, and of course, throughout Europe is also the same time period. But I will speak a few pastimes of the Lord, which kind of illustrates a little bit about his appearance in the world. Um, growing up in the house of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra, he was the cynosure of everyone's heart, everyone's eyes. His first real revelation of his actual identity came at the time when he was only three years old. At that time, one particular Brahmana, very pious Brahmana, very devoted Brahmana, he was traveling, he came to the area of Navadvip, and he just happened to stop in the house of Sanchi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. He had been fasting for three days, 
and he was worshiping his deity in the form of Gopal, which he would, he would carry around his neck on a, uh, on a necklace. And uh, he would chant the Gopal mantra. Uh, Glem Krishnaya, Govindaya, Gopijana Vallabhaya, or Klim Krishnaya Bhuvadaya. There are different ways to chant the Gopal Mantra. So he would worship the Lord by chanting the Gopal Mantra. So he came. Now he had been fasting and he wanted to take rest. And Jagadas Mishra welcomed him in. Oh, such a saintly Brahmin. He has come to my house. He was so happy. He gave him all honors and welcomed him so nicely. And he said, my dear Brahman, what can I do for you? He said, well, I have been fasting for three days. I would like to break my fast. So can you make the arrangements? Sure, we will be happy. So Jagannath Vishar made all the arrangements. And the Brahman says, you just give me the arrangements. I will cook for myself. Give me the utensils and the food substances, the ingredients, and I will cook. And so he began cooking and he cooked rice. Now, when he finished, he started to chant the mantras to his deity, the Gopal mantra. And while he was chanting, little Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's name was Nimai because he was born under the neem tree. Uh, and uh, he came and started to eat the rice that the Brahmana had cooked. And the Brahmana started to become really distressed. What is happening? This child is ruining the offering. And he starts to call out in that way. Jagannath Mishra becomes alert and he comes and sees what happened. He takes a stick and he starts chasing after little Nimai and Nimai runs away and gets away. Jagannath Mishra is more concerned with the Brahmana, how he has been, he gave him so many opportunities to welcome him. Now his hospitality is turning into something else. So he's feeling very bad. He's feeling responsible. He prays to the Brahman, oh, we are so sorry. We didn't know the child would do that. Oh, the Brahman said, well, that is okay. I can understand. And then he said, well, please cook again. No, no, I think the Lord doesn't want me to eat. No, no, please, we, we want you are a guest. We want you to have everything that you should have. So please cook again. So he agreed. And then everything was placed again. And every, this time Nimai was not around. And uh, Brahmana started to cook again. This went on for some time. Finally, he was finished. And he started to chant his Gopal mantra to offer the food to his deity, Gopal, Krishna. And while he was chanting, again, little Nimai came out from nowhere and started to eat the offering. Oh, he became so distressed. Hi, 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 what is happening? What is happening? And Jagannath Mishra hears the sounds again, starts coming back. Oh, he sees little Nimai, and this time he's really chasing after Nimai. Nimai runs into the room, locks the door from the inside, and he stays there. Ah, Jagannath Mishra is overwhelmed with, with sorrow. How is it that child again has spoiled everything? He comes back, and he starts to beg forgiveness, we are so sorry, we didn't know. I promise you it will never happen again, please cook again. Oh, no, 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 this is, now it is evident that the Lord does not now want me to have food today. No, no, you must, no, no, I can't. At that time when they were going back and forth, Vishwarup, the elder brother of Lord Chaitanya, who is an expansion of Ananta Shesh, he came walking into the room and he is beauty personified way. And then he saw the Brahman. He said, my dear Brahman, 
it is our good fortune you have come to our house. We are sorry for my little brother, but please cook again. We will be very happy if you do that. Uh, when, the, when the Brahmanas saw this beautiful boy, he was thinking, who is that? <laughs> he is so attractive. And Jagannath Mishra said, oh, that is my elder son. His name is Vishwaru. Um, and Vishwaru very charmingly convinced the Brahmin to cook again. And so now it's late in the evening. And practically member, all the members of the house are, are about to, are taking rest. And the Brahmin starts, because he, he has to clean everything and then start from the beginning again and prepare everything from scratch, you might say. And he did that each time. Now he's doing it again. And this time it's very late. So it takes some time. Well, now he's cooking. And this time now it's about 12 o'clock midnight. Everyone is asleep. He finally finishes his cooking. He sits down in prayer, chants the Gopal mantra, and starts to beg the Lord to come to take the food. Again, <laughs> little Nimai comes out of the room. And he starts eating the offering of the Brahmana. <laughs> and this time, he's so flabbergasted, the, the Brahmana, he can't do anything. Oh, no, he's done it again. <laughs> and everyone is asleep. So this time, when he's seeing what is happening, the Lord, little Nimai, turns to him. He says, why are you acting like that? You're calling me, I am coming. I'm accepting your offering. Why are you in distress? <laughs> and then he's stunned. He can't understand what the child is saying. And then Lord Chaitanya, little Nimai, expanded himself into Krishna. And he brought the whole atmosphere with Vrindavan with him. So all of a sudden, now the Brahman is seeing Vrindavan down with trees and rivers and birds and wonderful, wonderful scenery. And it's all Vrindavan down. And he's seeing Krishna there standing in his threefold form, playing on his foot, smiling. All of this is happening and it's going on. He, he gets up, he falls down. He is in ecstasy. He loses consciousness. He comes back to consciousness. The Lord continues to display his most magnificent form of Krishna and along with Vrindavan. Now, this is going on for some time. And now he's just <laughs> overwhelmed with ecstasy. He can't even keep his consciousness. Fine, this goes on for quite a long time as described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And then at one point, he takes the rice that he cooked and he starts smearing it all over his body and rolling on the ground in ecstasy, calling out with great happiness and love for Krishna. This sort of <laughs> wakes some of the residents in the house and they're all thinking oh well i think he finally got something to eat now he's happy <laughs> they couldn't understand what he was experiencing and then at one point everything disappeared and then krishna now is back as lord chaitanya the little baby and he starts offering prayers and the lord says um you have been my devotee for many, many lives, and you have been such a sincere worshiper. I wanted to give you this mercy. And the Brahmin, well, he couldn't even speak. And then the Lord said something. He said, but one thing, you must not tell anyone what you have seen and experienced tonight. 
If you do, then something bad will happen. So please do not tell. My mission has not yet begun, but I'm giving you some special mercy. And then for three months, throughout those three months, the same Brahmin would come and play with little Nimai. But many times he wanted to say what was the experience, just to let everyone know how good, how much good fortune they had. But then he remembered the Lord said not to. So he kept that. He never spoke what he knew. So this was the first time in the Lord's pastime on earth where he displayed himself as Sri Krishna uh, Vrindavan to that very fortunate Brahmana. So this is a beautiful pastime. There are so many wonderful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, his mission was to spread the Sankirtan movement for the first, we might say, 18 years of his life. He was more or less Nimai Pandit, the very arrogant scholar of Navadweep. He was so uh, prefer profuse in knowing the scriptures and speaking the scriptures and he became expert in logic and grammar and no one could defeat him. He would challenge people to debates and he would defeat them very easily. He was so intelligent that he would even uh, defeat people and say, all right, now you defeat the argument that I use to defeat you. In other words, def yeah, defeat my argument. And they couldn't. So he would defeat his own argument and reestablish another principle. And then he would challenge them to defeat that. And they couldn't. And then he would defeat that and establish the original argument that he gave earlier. So in this way, he was... Um, Arrogant, he would like to defeat everyone. <laughs> One time, Mukunda, some of the devotees who were there before him, Mukunda was there. Um, of course, Advaita Charya, Aridas Thakur, Srivas Thakur, all of these personalities appeared before Lord Chaitanya. And One time, he, he saw Mukunda and he walked up to Mukunda and said, Tell me the meaning of liberation. And, and Mukunda said, liberation means become free from all material suffering. Yeah. Lord Chaitanya said, that's not the answer. Go home and study your books and come back tomorrow and I'll ask you again. <laughs> so this in this way, <laughs> he, would, he would challenge everyone. <laughs> but at one point, and it was, the Lord decided that uh, he wanted to move his mission in another direction. So he decided to take a trip to Gaia. And while he was in Gaia, he was worshiping in one Vishnu temple. And when he was there in the Vishnu temple, a very effulgent personality came in. And when Lord Chaitanya, who's Nimai Pandit, the scholar, saw that, he saw, this is my spiritual master. And that was none other than Ishwar Puri himself. And the Ishwar Puri also noticed Lord Chaitanya. So their eyes met and they locked in what we say, a very, very deep loving relationship. That night, Lord Chaitanya, uh, went to see Ishwar Puri and he surrendered at the lotus feet of Ishwar Puri and he said, you are my spiritual master. Please give me diksha, give me initiation. Without getting it, without getting initiation, the goal of life cannot be attained. Tad bigyarta gudum eva abhigatsche, Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, he accepts the spiritual master. 
when Krishna was here in his pastimes in Vrindavan, he accepted Sandipani Muni as his spiritual master. So the Lord, when he appears in his incarnations, some of them, he, ex he accepts a spiritual teacher. Why? To teach the conditioned souls that the goal of life, which is Prema Pumartha Mahan, love of God, cannot be approached unless one surrenders in submission to a representative of Krishna who is fully empowered by Krishna to teach Krishna consciousness. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya accepted a spiritual master as an example for all of us. Sometimes we think, well, why should I get a spiritual master? You know, I know Krishna. I grew up in India. And we all knew about Krishna. We grew, we grew up in our families and we, were, we would honor Krishna. We would go to the temple of Krishna. So we did all that. And therefore... Yeah, you know, Krishna's there, and uh, I'm here, and I have a relationship with Krishna. Why should I get up someone in between? Well, every, practically every science that you need to understand or desire to understand is taught by a teacher. Even if you read books, those books are written by the teacher who knows the science. So it is required to have a teacher. Therefore, it's not optional if we want to actually attain the full mercy of the Lord and devotion, one has to accept the bona fide spiritual master, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadviri Pravipate Nantari Prasyena Sevaya Upadeksyanti Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tatvadarshanaha. That by surrendering to the spiritual master, who is the representative of Krishna himself, through submission, desire to serve, and inquiring from that person, then one can actually make progress to the goal of life, which is love of God. And the spiritual master is like the eyeglasses, just like the eyes may be deficient or have cataracts or have some cannot see beyond a certain point or cannot even see at all or hardly at all then by adding the eyeglasses it enhances the image to be seen in the same way the spiritual master is the transparent eyeglasses he is he accepts worship on behalf of the Lord, not for himself, but for the Lord, and he offers that worship to the Lord. And when the Lord is pleased by his pure devotee offering the, the devotion given by his disciple to the Lord, that disciple makes advancement on the path. In other words, they receive the mercy of the Lord, and they get knowledge. When worshiping the spiritual master, one receives spiritual knowledge. One receives, receives a detachment from material life. In other words, one can free themselves from the entanglement of material energy, which keeps us in ignorance and bound up by the activities of struggling in order to simply achieve some peace in mind, which never comes. <laughs> it's just a, a, just a struggle. Material life is just struggle. That's all it is. Um, uh, so the spiritual master is what is called the mercy manifestation of Krishna. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya accepted Ishwar Puri as his spiritual master. And after being accepted by Ishwar Puri and worshiping him, the Lord returned to Navadvipa. And now he was a different person. <laughs> He wasn't the same anymore. His arrogance had gone. He had become a humble Vaishnava. This time, rather than challenging people, he was offering service to them. And he, he would take the clothes of the devotees. He would wash them himself. He would hang them up for drying. Once they were dry, he would fold them and return them to the devotee who owned them. 
he would uh, bring prasadam to the devotees. Just like a menial servant, although he is the Supreme Lord himself, he was teaching the principle of devotion from the point of view of a... But we might say that his teaching is also his happiness. The Lord likes to serve his devotees. The Lord likes to serve his devotees. He enjoys serving his devotees, and especially Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was so uh, attractive to his devotees. He would joke with his devotees. It says that he would tell very funny jokes, not in general, but to his associates who were his devotees. Uh, he would show kindness in so many ways to his devotees. And of course, he would always inspire Kirtan and Prashadam. This was Lord Chaitanya. I would like to, uh, before I end the discussion today, I would like to read um, a particular prayer written by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya in glorification of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> now, if you'll bear with me, I will try to sing it. <clears throat> I'm not a good singer, but it's so beautiful. And there's eight verses. <clears throat> it's called Sri Sachi Sutas Sutastakam. Sri Sachi Sutastakam, and it's by Sarvabhoma Pravacharya. It's very beautiful. <clears throat> and I'll read, I'll chant each of the verses and read the translation one by one as we go down the verses. So if you give me permission, I will begin. Nava Gora Param, Nava Pushpa Saram, Nava Bhava Daram, Nava Lakshya Karam, Nava Hasya Karam, Nava Hema Varam, Pranamhami Sachi Sutta Gora Varam. Nava prema yutam nava nitta sucham nava desha kritam nava prema rasam nava davila sa sutta prema mayam anamami sachi sutta bodavaram haribhakti param Hari Namadaram Karajapakaram Hari Namaparam Nayane Satatam Pranayasrudaram Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Satatam Janata Pava Tapaharam Pamamarta Parayana Loka Gatim Navaleha Karam Jagatapaharam Panamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Nija Bhakti Karam Priya Charutaram Natanartana Nagara Lajakuram Kulakami ni ni manasa lasa lasa karam panamami sachi sutta oravaram kalatala valam kalakata varam niduvadyansuni nikaya madhuram nijabakti guna vritta natyakaram Anamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Yuga Dharma Yutam Purna Nanda Sutam Dharani Sutritam Bhava Bhava Chitam Tanadhanyat Sitchitam Nijavasa Yutam 
Anamami Sachi Sutta Bodavadam Arunam Nayanam Charanam Vasanam Vadane Savitam Svakanam Agnam Purute Sura Sam Jagata Jivanam Anamami Sachi Sutta Bodavadam Anamami Sachi Sutta Kodavaram Pranamami Sachi Sutta Kodavaram Pranamami Sachi Sutta Kodavaram Pranamami Sachi Sutta Kodavaram Translation His complexion is the hue of fresh cream tinged with kumkum. He is the ever fresh Cupid who shoots arrows of newly blossoming flowers. He bears newer and newer moods of emotional ecstasy. He is fond of performing novel dances. He makes ever new jokes that cause much laughter. His brilliant luster is fresh, like freshly cast gold. I bow down to Gora, the beautiful son of Manasachi. So in this first verse, you see, his color is mentioned, and he is like Cupa. His, his appearance awakens the love of God. He has many, many moods of ecstasy which he performs when he performs his dancing. And he likes to dance in different ways expressing his loving moods. He makes jokes <clears throat> with his friends, and they enjoy his jokes tremendously. Again, it's mentioned he is he has a fresh cast gold. He is Gora or Goranga, the beautiful son of Nagasachi. <clears throat> he is endowed with ever fresh love of God. His radiant luster is like the color of fresh butter. His fresh attire is arranged in ever new fashion. He relishes ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He shines in the ninefold ways while executing the ninefold process of devotion. He is permeated with the most auspicious love of nature. Bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Manasachi. He is absorbed in devotion to Sri Hari. He maintains the chanting of the names of Krishna, Hari. While chanting, he counts the holy names on the fingers of his hands. He is addicted to the name of Hari. He always has tears of love welling in his eyes and bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Namasachi. So we see from this third verse that not only does he chant, but he keeps count. <laughs> we have our counter beats, and Prabhupada said this is something we, that is important. We must always keep count of what we chant, and we must make some. Numerical, numer, numeral vow and chant that many names every day. So chanting and counting is there with Lord Chaitanya and the Goswamis of Vrindavan also chanted and counted their rounds, although they chanted many, many rounds. <laughs> Lord, uh, Hari Das Thakur chanted 333,000, he chanted 192 rounds a day. So he kept count. <laughs> so counting is also, it's called Sankhya, to count is important. He is always removing the suffering and material existence from mankind. He is a goal of life for persons who are dedicated to their supreme interest. He inspires men to become like honeybees, eager for the honey of Krishna Pema, he removes the burning fire of the material world and bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So what he's saying here is that material life is simply suffering. He removes that. Those who worship Lord Chaitanya, they can become free from the suffering of material existence. He's the goal of life for those who actually understand their best interests. People in the material world think, if I can have this, I will be happy. If I can be with this person, I will be happy. If I can get this position, I will be happy. If I can be in this place, I will be happy. 
That is not the supreme interest. The supreme interest is to awaken our love for Krishna. And he is like a honeybee who teaches that by example, by his own eagerness for Krishna Prima. He Number five, he motivates pure devotion unto himself. He is the most attractive to his beloved servitor. By his dramatic dancing, he exhibits the characteristics of the king of paramours. He causes the mind of beautiful young village women to dance. I bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Lachi. He's very charming. And when he dances, he dances in very dramatic ways. He's the king of lovers, and he inspires love in the hearts of all, especially from, from women. He is very attractive to the women of the world. It says that every, every, all women of the world, when they start to learn about Lord Chaitanya, they cannot become attractive to anyone else. <laughs> this is Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself. <clears throat> he plays cartos, and its throat emits sweet, melodious sounds, and the vibrant notes of the veena are softly played. He thus inspires the devotees to perform dramatic dancing that is infused with aspects of his own devotional service. I bow down to Golda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So by his presence, he inspires devotion in the form of dancing and his devotees also dance. We have stories of devotees, how, how they would dance for hours and hours in the presence of Lord Chaitanya in the mood of calling out to Krishna with such happiness and such love. Lord Chaitanya has rained down the, the joy of Vaikuntha. He has brought the spiritual world to the material world in the form of this Sankirtan movement. As Krishna came and performed his pastimes in Vrindavan, it wasn't so easy. It was actually very difficult for those, for, for those to enter into Krishna's pastimes when Krishna was here. They had to be a very elevated and fixed in pure devotional service. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he inspires the process through his own devotion and devotees sing and dance in great happiness. Number seven, he is accompanied by the Sankirtan movement, which is the religious practice for the age of Kali. He is the son of Nanda Maharaj come again. He is an extraordinarily brilliant ornament of the earth. His preaching mood is suitably adapted to the cycle of birth and death. His consciousness is fixed in meditation on his own form of Krishna. He is always accompanied by his transcendental abode, I bow down to Golda, beautiful son of Mother Sachi. So it says that he is Nanda Maharaj's son come again. So he, there are sometimes doubt that Lord Chaitanya is not Krishna. Here, confirmed by his intimate associate, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was a, was a, Mayavadi, a great philosopher, but a Mayavadi, after coming in contact with Lord Chaitanya, he became a pure devotee of Lord Chaitanya. He, he, and he glorifies Lord Chaitanya in so many ways. His mind is completely changed by the presence of Lord Chaitanya. He was noted as one of the chief scholars of the time. He was respected by everyone as being the most learned. In fact, he was so learned that in Mithila, the place where Ram's pastimes occur in Mithila, there was a particular scripture that was a glorification of the Lord that the uh, the residents of Matila would not give to anyone else. And, and scholars wanted it, and others wanted it, they couldn't get it. So, and it was not available anywhere 
you could hear it being spoken, but you couldn't find it written anywhere. And so he went to Mithila, heard it spoken, memorized the whole thing as it was being spoken, came back to Navadweep and wrote it down and gave it to the residents. And he was noted for such a sharp memory, Shruti Dara, remembered everything he could hear. So he, he's, he's glorifying Lord Chaitanya as the son of Nanda Maharaj. Um, and, and although he is Nanda Maharaj's son, he's in the mood of his own devotee, therefore he's fixed in meditation on his own form of Krishna. His Sankirtan movement is the religion of the age. Krishna Varnam Tuata Sa Krishna Sangopanga Saparshida Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajati Hi Saha. In this age of Kali, there is only one Kalir Doshanidi Rajan Asti Eko Maha Boom Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangam Padam Bajit. In this age of Kali, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the sinus or the the essence of the glorifying the Lord in this age, and it pushes back the age of Kali. Kali Yuga Pavana, Kali Boyanasana, Sri Sachinandana Namre. He chases Kali away simply by his appearance. And when the devotees chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in Kirtan, the material energy cannot enter that kirtan in no way. In the kirtan movement, the chanting of Krishna's name is the religion of the age. If one performs that, there's no other need to perform any other forms of worship. Chanting the holy names of the Lord is the essence and the sum total of all religious practices in this age of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare. Verse number eight, his eyes, the soles of his feet and the clothing are reddish like the color that heralds the rising sun. As he utters his own names, his voice falters. He awakens the sweet flavor of life throughout the universe. I bow down to Goda, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. We see sometimes in the morning, when the, before the sun arises, there's a red, beautiful red color within the sky. So it's compared in Lord Chaitanya's eyes, the soles of his feet are all compared to the heralding of the rising of the beautiful sun during the morning hours. But this is a beautiful, beautiful expression of devotion given by Sarvabhama Bhattacharya in glorification of Lord Chaitanya. Ah. Oh. Thank, thank you. Hare Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. What a wonderful, so wonderful to hear about, about the Gorkatha. It was very, very nice, Maharaj. And the stories and the pastime were so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Devotees, if you have any Hare, Hare Devotees, do you have any questions for Maharaj? You can ask him. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Nandali. My humble obeisances to you, Maharaj. All glories to Shira Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, I just wanted to ask this question that is it okay to eat grapes? You know, if you fast until midday, or should we be fasting all day, Kadashi? Hmm, I think we lost your sound when you began your question. We you can try again. Sorry, Maharaj, I think the line, I, I kind of lost you for a minute. I can hear you clearly now. 
Nice. Sorry, sorry, Maraj. So, uh, sorry, so Maraj, yes, my question was that what should we be doing on, you know, um, or tomorrow? So should we be fasting all day Ekadashi or is that okay to break the fast and have grains? Um, it's, um, well, you can take a Nikadasi, um, uh, Prashadam at, what is it, sundown, right? Yes, Maharaj. And you fast all the way up to sundown, and then you can take Usually we have Abhi Shake and you break the fast with Abhi Shake and there's no grains on that day. Whatever is offered to the deities is saved for the next day and it's served out because the next day is Jagannath Mishra Mahotsava. It's the day we honor the father of Lord Chaitanya, Jagannath Mishra. On that day, the afternoon, the feast is given. That's the big feast, but you take some light prashadam in the evening. This whole day, you should hear and chant the glories of the Lord, perform activities, Abhi Sheikh, Kirtans, Kata, and associating with other devotees. Uh, we should not simply stay in our own rooms and uh, simply be by ourselves with a few people. We should. Look, we should go to the temples today and take part in the activities. Or change your house into a temple and do everything the temple does in your house. <laughs> but best to go to the temples. Today is the day for temples. Yeah. Yeah. Fast till moonrise. Yeah, that's right. So thank you, Raj. And sundown, sundown and moonrise happen at the same time. Generally. Okay, but don't think about eating. Think about chanting and dancing. <laughs> As I've got kids, you know, for them, festival is all about offerings. So just thought, you know, I'll just kind of prepare accordingly because tomorrow we'll obviously spend the whole day at the temple. So, you know, I'm going to start and start preparing today itself. Okay. We got, we, we got half, half of our group here today is celebrating today and the other half will celebrate today and tomorrow. So us guys who are in the farther range of the world, we get to do it twice. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Nandini. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, we are waiting for you, Maharaj. We're so excited and we are really waiting for you. I think you should be more excited about Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya is, is very much present. We just have to run to his lotus feet and take shelter and hear about him, chant his name and worship him in different ways. Sometimes we think, oh, the Lord is not with us. The Lord is personally present, but he's present by his when we chant his name, he's present. When we speak about him, he's present. When we hear about him, he's present. When we remember him, he's present. He's present. And when we do it together with other devotees, the presence becomes so sweet and so nice. Yeah, Saksa Dereitin Samasta Sastya. Direct. Saksa means direct.
Thank you, Maharaj. We have a question from Archana Dr. Mataji. Mataji, if you would like to go ahead. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Happy God Purnima. Hare Krishna, I hope my obeisance is to you. Uh, yes, uh, Maharaj, my question was that you mentioned that um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, elder brother, uh, Vishwarup, uh, he was the um, avatar of Ananta Shesha. So, I had to, I just wanted to know, like, Lord Nityananda is also the um, incarnation of uh, Sankarsana Ananta Shesha? So, yeah, well, that, yeah, that's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yeah, he is Ananta Shesha also. He's Balaram. Hmm. Yeah. But particular aspect of Balaram's energy manifests itself in different aspects of himself. So one of the energies of Balaram is Ananta Shesh. So Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram are not different. So, but specifically with Vishwaru, he is also uh, the internal energy, Lord Balaram, but he manifests himself in more in the mood of Ananta Shesh. So these are very detailed kind of technical aspects of the Lord's incarnations and how they present themselves in the mood of themselves. The different forms are not different, but sometimes they emphasize a particular incarnation of themselves as opposed to another manifestation of themselves. Mm -hmm. Like Lord Balaram and Lord Nityananda are the same. But the mercy of Lord Nityananda is greater than the mercy of Lord Balaram. Mm -hmm. But they're the same person. So that mm -hmm. same Balaram is giving more mercy. Mm -hmm. okay. So as Ananta Shays, what is the service of Ananta Shays is that he is constantly glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, by chanting his glories. Ananta Shesh is the personification of holding up all of the universes on his heads. He is a multi-headed snake who sits at the bottom of the universes and holds up all of the universes on his heads. These universes are like little tiny mustard seeds on this gigantic form of the Lord. And what does he do? He chants. And he says that he's been chanting the glories of the Lord since time immemorial, and he hasn't been able, to, he hasn't repeated one of those glories even once. Mm -hmm. He's always chanting more and more of the glories of the Lord. Mm -hmm. so that's another shay. There's a whole chapter in the fifth canto describing an antishesh. You can read that in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. I had one more question, if I can ask. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord Chaitanya is called as Mahavadan Nyaya, uh, but uh, in the pastimes of Chota Haridas and the Jagai Madhai, we uh, see that he is really uh, very merciful to Jagai Madhai, but he is not uh, very merciful to Chota Haridas. So is there any uh, reason or is there any lesson for us that we can take from that? Like if we are, the, once we take, uh, become a devotee, may, is Lord not very merciful then? Oh, yeah. Well, he's, always, he's merciful to Haridas too. Mm -hmm. In the Mahaprakash Leela, when Haridas Thakur was there, the Lord explained that when the Lord took the position of the Supreme Lord and revealing himself as the Lord, this was a very rare occasion. It's called the Mahaprakash Leela, 21 hours that the Lord exhibited himself and accepted worship as the Supreme Personality of God and in the house of Sri Thakur. During the later part of that Leela, he started to offer benedictions to everyone and anyone. And when he turned to Haridas, he said, do you remember when you were being beaten in 22 marketplaces? He said, I, I was in Vaikuntha and I became very angry and I came 
And I came with my chakra and I was about to kill both of them. But your prayers for their deliverance and your compassion towards them was so strong that my chakra would not move from my hand. But seeing how you were being beaten, I decided to cover your body with my body. And so when the Lord said that, he took his charter off and turned around and the whip marks that were meant for Haridas were on the back of Lord Chaitanya. He showed that to Haridas and Haridas fainted. Couldn't, couldn't handle that. So he was directly protecting the Haridas in that particular pastime. Uh, Maharaj, I was asking about Chota Haridas. Oh, Chota Haridas. Well, oh, that's right. Chota Haridas. Okay, Chota Haridas. But he wanted to teach a very important part. So using the, the deviation of Chota Haridas, the Lord became very, very stern. And he didn't want to, you know, give Haridas, Chota Haridas, anything. He said, you can't come in my association ever again. So Chota Haridas went to the banks of the river and he drowned himself in the Ganga. But in his spiritual body, he was constantly glorifying the Lord, and the Lord was hearing that glorification. That's mentioned in that pastime. Mm -hmm. That they were, the Lord was always with Chota Haridas, as Chota Haridas was glorifying the Lord and with beautiful song and beautiful prayers in his spiritual body. So he, he used this particular pastimes to teach uh, the importance of the renounced order of life, those who are in the sannyasa order of life. He wanted to teach the strictness of this ashram. <laughs> so he uses his devotees in different ways to teach. And sometimes it appears to be he's being harsh, but he's not. Okay, Varus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. He showed mercy. He showed the high loss. Thank you, Mataji, for your question. Um, uh, Tifili Mataji, would you please like to go ahead and pose your question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> so wonderful to see you, and I'm so happy for you that you're in India. <laughs> so my question is about the golden age, um, this time that we're in now. I was wondering, um, I think I just kind of want to clear it up in my mind about um, I know that the benefits of the golden age is there's, um, we have the opportunity, you know, Goloka Vrindavan is available to us now. Um, but I also was wondering in terms of um, bringing, is it an, also an opportunity to bring more people to Krishna consciousness? Or where will our preacher, preaching efforts be stronger during this time? How can we use the yeah. benefits of this time? Oh, yeah, yeah, especially now. The more people are suffering on the material level, the more they're inclined to reach out to something to relieve their suffering. Therefore, it's important that we are there for them. So whatever way we can preach, we should do that and uh, make preaching a very important part of our, our, our devotion to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So preaching, reaching, teaching, it's all the same. Uh, yeah, right now, preaching is really good. We're having experiences where I am, I mean, wherever I go, the devotees are also, I mean, the preaching hasn't been hampered, it's only increased during this last two years. Um, and it'll continue to increase because Lord Chaitanya's movement will build as Kali Yuga gets worse and worse. Mm. And then 
At one point, Lord Chaitanya's movement will start to flood the world with love of God, and Kali Yuga will be pushed back in a delayed form for at least 5,000 years. Okay, so 5,000. So that's, that's Lord Chaitanya's prediction. It can happen fast or it can happen slow, depends on the devotees, but it will happen. The Lord uses his devotees to propagate his mission. But if we're lazy and we just want to sit back and enjoy Krishna consciousness, then uh, Prabhupada said, the next generation will do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> but, but those who do it get the credit. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> okay. So... Our movement is a preaching movement. It's not a simply a chapati flipping movement. <laughs> Our movement is to reach out to the conditioned souls. Therefore, we center everything around preaching, teaching, uh, everything. Even our temple activities are meant to bring people in so we can teach them about Krishna consciousness. We don't have our own private programs that we have, and then we don't we, we allow the public to come in and take part, and then therefore they they get a taste and they get an understanding of what this Krishna consciousness is, and then they become devotees. So our whole movement is centered around preaching. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. And. As I said, it's getting better, but still, the demons are quite powerful right now, mm. and they have many more plans for greater power. So uh, we need to we need to push up the preaching even more, mm. particularly the Sankirtan movement, chanting and dancing in the streets, going out and chant for the public's benefit. Chanting and dancing in their temples, in our homes and streets. This is all Lord Chaitanya's mission. So thank you so much, Maharaj. So grateful for your association and have a wonderful Gaur Purnima tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Uh, <laughs> Hare Thank Krishna, Dandavan for now. I just wanted to say Hare Krishna too. This is Hari Radha from Fairfax, Virginia. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. I have Namrata Mataji. Would you like to go ahead? Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory, Krishna Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, I just wanted to ask, uh, what is the importance of uh, counting the holy names? Because uh, when, when it comes to Japa, we should make a numerical vow. We shouldn't just chant. And say, well, I'll chant this much today and this much tomorrow. We should make a numerical vow that I will chant this many rounds every day. <clears throat> that's the impediment. That's how we actually connect with the process of bhakti by making a numerical vow in our japa. That's part of the the Goswamis did that too. Sankhya Purna is one verse in glorification of the Goswamis. It said they chanted and they also counted. <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also did that. Prabhupada encouraged and made it a re requirement that everyone keep counter beads and count your rounds. <laughs> so if we're not chanting 16 rounds because we're not initiated yet, still we should make it a numerical vow. Say, say you decide to chant eight rounds a day. All right, so you count eight rounds. 
if you want to chant more, you can chant more, but you can't go below your numerical vow. Your numerical vow becomes the, the bottom line for your chanting every day. But everyone should make a numerical vow. Those who are initiated, they, they, they do that on, on the initiation. They agree to chant minimum 16 rounds. We never say maximum 16 rounds, we say minimum. So we, we count 16 at least. And for devotees who are not initiated, who are, who are practicing Krishna consciousness, they should uh, make a numerical vow. Because otherwise we just chant when we feel like it. Oh, today I'll chant. Today I don't feel like chanting. So I don't chant, but I chant when I want to. No, the numerical vow keeps you connected to the process and it keeps you connected to Krishna in a responsible way. So we have to make numerical vows. For those who are not initiated, <clears throat> we don't say <clears throat> you should make a particular number. We recommend that you make your own numerical vow and then follow that. But if you're aspiring for initiation, if you're serious, you should be chanting 16 rounds. Yes, Maharaj. I think uh, responsibility is one thing which uh, uh, counting the holy name is important for that responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and chanting is in the camera rounds all the time. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I'm in Bombay now. Yes, Maharaj? I'm here in Bombay. I'm at the temple. Yes, I'm very much excited to meet you on Gaur Purnima tomorrow, Maharaj. Okay. We'll be happy to see you. Yes, Maharaj. I'm, I'm almost coming for the entire day. So I'll be attending all your lectures. Starts at 9 a.m. in the morning. Yes, Maharaj. I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Thank you. See you tomorrow, Maharaj. Hare. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances or glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, thank you so much for the wonderful class and uh, all the importance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the Leela pastimes and uh, appearance, the reasons of uh, Lord Chaitanya. It's very, very wonderful. Please um, tell us uh, that how to you know, be grateful to um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, Srila Prabhupada and how to, you know, grow their mission. So in the Mahamantra, as we chant the sections, well, how to be grateful is to preach. Prabhupada said, if you, uh, <laughs> he said, do what I'm doing. In other words, preach Krishna consciousness. That's the way to, be, to show your gratefulness. They say, if you get something that is nice and you're happy with that, a very a natural person, a human person will like to share, share their happiness with others. That's just natural. When you get something valuable and you're happy, you think, how can I make others happy with what I received? So giving it to others is the way to show your gratefulness to Lord Chaitanya, to Krishna, to your spiritual master, to Prabhupada. Thank you, Manoj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mansi Mataji, please go ahead. Suda has a question, is it? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Mm -hmm. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, happy Gaur Maharaj in advance. 
That's tomorrow for me, but today is happy too because I get to do it twice. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maharaj, I have a question that if we have more attraction towards Mayapur Dham, but when it comes to the deities, if we have more attraction towards Krishna, then how do we understand this contradiction? It's not a contradiction. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking about the former Krishna playing on the flute. That's what Lord Chaitanya is teaching you. He's teaching you to become attracted to Krishna. <laughs> He's showing that himself in the mood of Srimati Radharani. Radharani's attraction for Krishna is what is he is displaying. So he's showing by example, we should get attracted to Krishna. So if you get attracted to Krishna, you are, you are making Lord Chaitanya completely happy because that's why he came to teach love of Krishna in the mood of Vrindavan. But then why we don't experience the same affection for Vrindavan as for Mayapur? Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an, that depends on you. You can you can also develop that affection. Right. In process, right, Maharaj? Yeah, because there's no difference between Mayapur and Vrindavan. Anyone who sees mm. difference between the two is mm. seeing wrongly. Mm. If you go to Mayapur, you'll see... Shamakun is there, Radhakun is there, Govardhan Hill is there. All the holy places of Vrindavan are also in, in Mayapur. Hmm. Well, Mayapur has an extra feature that Vrindavan doesn't have. Well, not doesn't have, but not in the extent that Mayapur, and that's called a Darya, mercy. The mercy is greater. And Sri Mayapur hmm. Because Kali Yuga affects the vision of everyone in this age by covering the different Dhams. But Mayapur doesn't get covered in Kali Yuga. It gets revealed more and more. And we are showing that by example, it says this, this temple of Vedic planetarium that's being built in Mayapur, when that is completed, that will bring waves of love of God throughout the whole world. That's mentioned in Navadvip Mahatma, the Bhakti Vinoda Core, that when that temple is built, the flood of love of God will increase as it goes around the world. So we want to get that temple built. <laughs> and it's been, I think, it's now 2022. We were supposed to open it tomorrow. That would be, that was the actual deadline. But by the effects of Kali Yuga, we had, things are going a lot slower than we expected. But the new, the next, prescribed date of opening is the 20, 2024. So in two years, we hope to have it open. And if you, you'll see, the devotees have been speaking about the TOVP, how important it is and how fundamental it is connected to the spread of Lord Chaitanya's mission. Because Jiva Goswami speaks about that Nityananda speaks about that temple. Lord Nityananda also for, forecasted that temple to be built in Mayapur. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, don't minimize Mayapur. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It's not different, but I can understand. <laughs> I can understand how people feel 
more inclined to Vrindavan. Well, that's fine. That's that. That's a particular mood. That's a mood. The mercy that flows is also different, Maharaj, right? It's the same, but it's more profuse and inevitably. Mm. The qualifications for entering into Vrindavan are greater than Mayapur. There's no qualifications in Mayapur. Lord Chaitanya is Patita Bhavan, Tava He's giving love of God to everyone and anyone without discrimination. Just take it. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> uh, I any. Nina, I think we have some questions in the chat, right? Yes, let, I'm just trying to reach that. Don't see any questions. Sri Mayapur Dham, any day for me. So, so, so grateful to Guru Maharaj for sending here. I think has, yes. Suda made a question, didn't she? Suda? I don't know why it's not showing in my chat. Maharaj, if you would like to go ahead, you can read it. Uh, I don't see. No questions, just glorifications. Srila Maharaj, uh, Prabhu is saying that, that there aren't any questions, though. So. Sudha Mataji, you can unmute yourself. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Dhanu Pranam Guru Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All praise to Sula Prabhupada. Sorry, I don't have any question, but thank you so much for the wonderful... Um, okay, is it is it audible, Guru Maharaj? Is it better? Mm, no? It's too low. Okay, I don't know. I'm just close to microphone. Um, Hare Krishna, is it better? Yes. That's better, yeah. Okay, yeah. Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class. I don't have any questions, but just uh, uh, such a beautiful class today. Uh, just uh, need your blessings, seeking your blessings on this auspicious day. Um, uh, so I can... Um, Engage in a pure devotional service, <laughs> Lotus Feet of Guru and God. Thank you again for this wonderful class. You know, the blessing is that we become more attracted to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Yes, yes, Guru Marsha. Thank you. Okay, so we are about two hours into the class, but if anyone else would like to speak something, we can. Okay, we can stop here. Further questions? Yes. No last minute questions from anybody. We can go ahead and end the call then. Thank yeah. you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Pancha Kalpata Rupyashi Kripa Sindhu Kaiva Chipanita Rampavani Pio Vaishnavi Guru Namo Namaha. Oh, Swami Maharaj. Ki. Hey. Hey.